or welcome to today's lecture about Kubernetes. Um, in the last lecture, we have talked about uh, config maps uh, secrets, um, as well as deployments, I think. So we've uh, seen how containers have been deployed, especially if if they are meant to be running continuously, what they also call long-running processes in the 12-factor manifest. We have then seen how configuration um, values can be extracted from the code base uh, into config maps and secrets. In particular, the purpose of this is to ensure that one code base can be run in several environments. So if you deploy an application uh, to your staging system, which in for production workloads usually is done to ensure that the application works as expected, you don't want to change and modify the code in order to run it on a diff in production. Sometimes applications are spread across the globe so that application instances for uh, customers in Asia Pacific, uh, Europe and America, uh, North America, USA for example, would be um, operated in different environments. So this would be another example where it is very important to keep your application configuration out of your application source code because whenever you deploy your application to those different environments, there will be settings um, specific to each environment. So for example, uh, URIs um, and other uh, configuration values that may change. Uh, we've seen that uh, the ingress requires a TLS certificate secret, uh, so this would be also different because most likely the domain will be different. So we've seen that um, the ideal way to run applications in Kubernetes is using a deployment and the best way to store configuration values is config maps and the best way to store uh, sensitive information is secrets. So deployments provide abstractions um, on top of replica sets and pods and give you more control over, uh, the, over the update of your applications over time, uh, which means that the deployment will manage your replica sets, um, shrink them, eliminate them, create a new replica set and grow it in a rolling update. We have seen that rolling updates can also be um, challenging for the application code as two, simultane uh, as two application versions will run simultaneously. And for that reason, your application should be aware of that fact that two application versions can run at the same time. Especially if you do uh, a database schema migrations, which may cause incompatibilities between the application and a particular schema, you may uh, change. You may want to change your strategy to uh, in the deployment uh, to replace the replica set instead of have two replica sets and scale one down and scale one up, um, or adapt your application respectively. Uh, in today's um, sessions, we are going to look into uh, the concepts of jobs and cron jobs. Uh, we are not going to uh, discuss this in a in a very great detail, as the ultimate goal for this um, for today's uh, session would also be to get to stateful sets. Um, I'd say then let's get started or if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask them right away. All right, so jobs it is. Um, so yeah, creating jobs can be easy. Um, politicians would be happy to have the, the same interface to create jobs that easily. I know it's a poor joke, but I can't resist. So replica sets and deployments are resources to describe long running processes, but not always long running process is what you want. Now, 
there are two different concepts that could be mentioned at this point if a process is not to be um, run for a longer time. The first would be jobs, which is what we are looking um, at right now. But also it should be mentioned that if you describe a pod, you can also have what is called init containers. I haven't covered this, uh, we haven't covered this in the tutorial yet, so it will be either in the advanced Kubernetes uh, course that will, um, that will be provided in, a, in the near future, or we'll put it into a revision of the course. So just for you to know that there is uh, the concept of uh, init containers, we'll see that if, for example, we are we are looking when we are looking at stateful sets, you may have the challenge that in order to run a particular application, you need to perform prelimi preliminary tasks that will set up the environment in a certain way so that your stateful set or your process in the stateful set or in you know in an arbitrary pod can run i'll give you an example you may have to replace values within a configuration template with specific values that you will only know once you start the environment I'll, so one simple example would be the ip address of a pod which is unknown until you start the pod. So if you if you have a, a process that requires you to put in your external IP address for, ver for whatever reason into a config file, you can't put it in a config map because um, config maps are sta is static content, or at least to this point. I'm pretty sure that this will change at some point or there will be additional means but in, in a native Kubernetes, um, a config map is rather static. So let's say you have two different containers in your pod and each of the containers, uh, each of the container, uh, no, each of the containers will require a certain config file to be present. And you need to modify the config file, uh, the config file from the config map a bit. How would you do that? So you could, what you could do is you can create an so-called empty dir volume. So you would specify in the pod that there will be a volume that is initially empty. That's why it's called empty dir. It will be shared f for all the containers in the pod. Well, let's say in case you mount it, but you can mount the volume into every container of your pod. So what you can do is basically create a shared directory that would be shared across the pod, uh, the containers of your pod. The content of this directory is volatile. That means it will be destroyed when the pod terminates. So you, you don't want to store your data there. But for example, what you can do is you can mount a config map as a file, copy the file to the empty there, modify the file, and then share it with your containers. So this way um, you can um, you modify the config map actively and still have access to it among the containers. Now the question would be how do you copy it and how do you modify it? And uh, while there are various ways how to do that, one way would be to have an init container to perform such a task. So the init container is a different from a regular container in the way that you run the init containers in a strict sequence. So only if a init container one has been completed successfully, init container two will be started. So you have ordinality here, which allows you to make assumptions about the sequence in which the containers are executed. And Kubernetes will not try to restart those containers, but is happy once they have been completed successfully. So for example, if the container image in conjunction with its command does nothing more but copying a file and this copy command uh, returns with a, uh, a zero uh, exit code which suggests that the command has been executed successfully then you'll be fine and the next init container will run. So as a takeaway keep in mind 
if, if you need to perform prelimi preliminary tasks in a container, for example, if you need to set up run runtime dependencies, uh, keep in mind that there is uh, a concept called init containers. And if you look up init containers, you will directly uh, find the corresponding part of the Kubernetes documentation. Uh, you will see some examples here. And as you can see, the init container is basically just a container specification, but with a little bit of extra semantics in the way it is executed. As I said, you, you can make assumptions about the sequence in which the containers are executed. The container one has been has to be executed successfully in order to uh, start container two. And only after the init containers are run, your containers will be run and the, and the pod can be ready. So if the init containers fail, your pod will fail. So beside of that, that's not too much of a complication. Just keep in mind that this method, that this um, uh, concept exists. And if you ever need it, just look it up. It's rather simple. But so in contrast to init containers, uh, sometimes you, you want to perform a job that is not an integral part of a container, or the job has a life cycle that is somehow different from a con from a pod uh, or makes use of something that's totally unrelated. Um, so there are two kinds of jobs that we will look into. The first is the regular job and the second is a cron job. So a job would be a one-off, um, let's say, program you want to execute. Um, often you do such a thing in, in order to get the effect of the job. So you could, for example, run a maintenance task that, that will take care of several different entities um, in such a job. Or you could uh, run an analytic workload that will gather a piece of information and return it uh, or store it somewhere. But you don't want to do that frequently and you don't want to make this an integral part of your application because you only need it the one time. 